Hi, and welcome once again to Civil Engineering Today, um, brought to you by the Boston Society of Civil Engineers, a section of the American Society of Civil Engineers. I'm Anna Christina Fragoso. And I'm Reed Brockman. And today we're going to be covering kind of more local topics than we normally do. Unfortunately, we had a guest cancellation. Um, we are going to have them come back on. We're going to talk about beach erosion. But today we thought we'd visit other things going on in the immediate area. And also we have a lot of events that um, are for engineers, but they're also for the public. Right. I, I want to talk a little bit about what our organization is. Um, we're the Boston Society of Civil Engineers. As we said, we're part of the American Society of Civil Engineers. And the name says that, you know, that we're a bunch of civil engineers, obviously, but that's only half the story. Mm -hmm. um, we're a charity organization, so half of our efforts go on making, you know, giving presentations and, and giving courses and things that make people who take care of your infrastructure, um, making them more knowledgeable and more abreast of what's going on so that they can better take care of your bridges, tunnels, drinking water, coasts, beaches, everything, uh, anything that you use every day. But on top of that, we focus um, about half of our efforts on trying to help the public. Yep, I mean, that's, that's why we do this show, um, is to help you understand. And in fact, um, this has always been a call-in show that we go get few calls. Um, if you have something in your neighborhood now that you think you'd like to see, maybe needs improvement, or that you wish you had in your neighborhood, and it doesn't need to be um, anything, you know, it could be something that you just fantasize about, you know, some because there's a lot of sustainable um, uh, development type ideas that may not necessarily work in your area, but if you, you want to talk about why or why not that you can have them, we'll try and get a guest. You just need to call in. The number is 617-708. 3290. So again, any kind of neighborhood improvement or things you just wished you could see, um, better transportation, although I've been to a lot of meetings on transportation and there's always room for improvement, but there's funding issues with that too. And I think that's where we help you understand, um, you know, first of all, we are at the site talking to the people who directly are talking or need the transportation and we try and help the politicians understand, yes, we need to, to focus here. We need attention here. I mean, this really is an outreach to public, not just adults. We have so many things we do as far as kids' programs. I mean, from elementary, middle school, high school. Reed is very actively involved in many programs. I don't know if you want to highlight right. some of them. Oh, of course I and do. And they all need funding, too. So <laughs> right. make sure you mention the that we are a 501c3 organization. Right. So we're, we're a 501c3 charity, and, and the focus uh, with the public is, is usually pretty straightforward. Um, we really want the public to understand um, how the, the world works around them, how their, their local area works. We want them to understand when you turn on drinking water um, that, you know, that it doesn't just magically come out. It's gone through some kind of a process. When you flush a toilet, it doesn't just magically disappear. It goes somewhere and goes through a process. Um, and um, some of the specific things we've been doing lately, um, we've actually been giving tours of Boston Bridges. Um, we gave uh, three of them in the past month and a half uh, to adults, to the public, on top of the ones we do for oh, really? students I didn't know all that. the time. You did... Yeah. You did uh, some for adults? That's yeah, nice. we did it at the, for no, the West End Museum. We did it. And then we had another one with um, the Cambridge Science Festival. And that one's actually during the, uh, when the marathon bombing happened, we were on that tour. And then there was another one that was scheduled after. Well, yeah. we, we were doing them all the time. And coming up, we've got, God, we're going to be giving the tour to at least, in the next month, at least 800 students will be coming on so the tour. So you should probably mention where people can go, maybe get info so, on. So, right. If you want info on this, we've actually, we're working. I have a high school in, intern right now that's working on turning the tour into a sort of geocache online, which will be very fun. That will be fun. That's going to be good. Especially but, when the Google glasses come out. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> Chris will just be walking around blindly and smashing into things. No. That's, I guess they'll see what they got. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, uh, if you go to www.engineeryourfuture.org, that's the portion of the Boston Society of Civil Engineers' efforts that focus more on um, kids from kindergarten to 12th grade, um, very little even on the college. It's really kindergarten to 12th grade on engineeryourfuture.org. Um, and we've put up not only just the tour of the website, but there's actually, we gave a two-hour presentation at the West End Museum a few weeks ago, and it's got the full history 
of Boston's Bridges from the beginning. Uh, it was a two-hour presentation on it, and it's just chock full of pictures going back to the 1600s. No photos in the 1600s. That's not really possible. And we have a nice collection at the tech as well, don't we? Right. And the Engineering Center also has a great library full of all kinds of stuff. Like that. I, I think know. actually the, that um, we, the Boston Society of Civil Engineers section, we're the oldest professional society in the country. I think we're 165 years this we August. 1848 was the founding of the society. Meanwhile, the American Society of Civil Engineers was only from 1852, making us four years older. Oh, four years older. <laughs> hey, that counts those four years. We actually just rubbed that in because uh, we're very lucky. The incoming national president of the American Society of Civil Engineers is coming to town tomorrow for a dinner that we're putting on. Uh, to honor a whole bunch of different people. Um, we are honoring, we had a contest uh, about a month ago for, God, we have two contests that we're honoring. Uh, first, there was the contest that ended at the end of March. It's the online bridge contest. We name it after Ralph Salvucci, one of our members, who is uh, my mentor uh, once upon a time. And he unfortunately died uh, when he was inspecting a bridge um, up on the Cana Viaduct up north of the city. And... Um, so we named uh, the contest after him, and the, um, the students that won, the top 10 and the over 30 and the under 30 are all coming to town. Uh, they all designed bridges, virtual bridges, using free software that you can get off of that website. And it was put together by a West Point professor, yeah. uh, Colonel Stephen Ressler, who actually just retired, and retiring the end of this month. Um, crazy, everybody's retiring, all kinds of stuff. But, oh. uh, the new faces of engineering. That's and we're honoring the new faces of engineering. Uh, she's from uh, Merrimack College. Uh, she was named, I guess there was 10 people named around the country as the new faces of engineering. These are college students that were really outstanding. And then on top of that, we are honoring an outstanding professor. Um, uh, I'm going to pronounce his last name wrong, but that's the problem. Is um, Ed Hadrick, I believe is the pronunciation. That sounds close. Okay. And um, he's coming in. He's from UMass Lowell. Um, awesome professor. We were working with him. Uh, his students were volunteering, going to the Lawrence schools regularly this year. And they're planning it next year, too. But just some of the things that go on at UMass Lowell are, are awesome. And uh, he is always at the forefront of this. Uh, but back to the contest, um, it was in the middle of March, there was uh, the American Society of Civil Engineers released an infrastructure report card. Yes, that's been very important to us, yeah. And what that is, is the grades actually came out fairly lousy. <laughs> yes, actually. I don't know if, I, if you've seen the little YouTube clip. Probably it's only been sent around to people in the industry, but if Stephen, Stephen Colbert, Colbert <laughs> making fun of the tiny triumphs, go solid waste, <laughs> that is probably the, the one item that does get the focus so it, the big, it needs, the big but joke, it still needs improvement. And the big joke is we went up from a D to a... D plus. D plus. So there's still a lot of room for improvement. and. Um, I mean, I do see some positives coming out of it. I mean, uh, along with this uh, report card, which if you go to the um, website, it's just www.infrastructurereportcard.org. So very easy, infrastructurereportcard.org. Um, you can actually even download an app for your phone and you can kind of breeze through it. And it's broken down by states. And while there is room for improvement, it's good to know that in general, the economy seems to be picking up and there are a lot of projects slated for next year. Yeah, so yeah. I think there are some positives happening. I don't know how much is focused on maintenance, but it's also the policy of this report card is to remind us as the professionals working on this stuff that we really need to design sustainable designs that include maintenance you know, because right. it's obviously money and taxpayer dollars. It's <laughs> always, you know, you want the lights, you want clean water, you want good roads with no congestion. But things cost money, so there's always a, a, a fine balance. And along with the report card they also released, which we've done a two-part show on, on um, the cost if we don't invest in our infrastructure. Right. So it is, it is very important. And I think we do need to get Peter Richardson back on here. He was very closely involved with this. Right. He's our we've president. Been, yeah, we've been, um, we've been reporting on this since 2007, I think, was the first one we right. did. Right. And we did the 2009. This one just came out. That means our show's been on since 2000. Yeah, we've wow. been on since 2006, I think, 2007. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, it's good. It's working. I mean, Stephen Kilbert is pretty mainstream, and he's mentioning it. So this is good for us. I mean, it's, it's working, you know. 
people right. are noticing and they're paying attention. So this is very good for us. We're, we're, we'll get them on to talk about it a little bit in more detail. We're a funny field, and anybody who doesn't really know what a civil engineer is in the first place, um, we're, we're a field that, you know, people hear the word engineering, and some people, well, they think we drive a train, but that's way off. Uh, but once they get past that and they do know what an engineer is, they figure, well, you know, an engineer is pretty much a problem solver. Then you got the next word. You got, okay, electrical engineering, deal with electricity, a mechanical engineer, something must move. Mechanical. Fans, vents. Fans or planes or something. And then you come, okay, civil. What, like society? Like design society? And yeah, pretty much. The things that, um, anything that is built, that, live. that is the background things that people use every day. So you shouldn't ever expect the civil engineering, anything that civil engineer, it doesn't really ever take the forefront of what people naturally think about because of the nature of the work. It's the background things. It's the drinking water. It's the roads. It's the traffic signals. It's the sidewalks. It's the sewage. retaining walls, the sewage, it's the, the jetties that stick out next to the beach when everybody's at the beach and they just go, what is that bunch of rocks? And it's traffic. I mean, traffic is a big, right. that, that's a big killer for all of us. We're all suffering from traffic in urban areas. I'm probably sure there's places actually in rural, I've done jobs all over the country and definitely in the rural areas, they too have their issues with roads and with traffics, but you're more likely to get stuck behind someone who's chatting with his neighbor who's driving by <laughs> than getting stuck in an actual traffic jam. But um, it's money wasted. The, the gas is burning and it's money going out the window, you know, on, on a small scale for e every individual. And on a large scale as a nation, for us, it's, it's a problem. It's a so, problem. So we take it seriously. The American Society, that report card we're talking about, the purpose of the report card isn't so much just to give out grades. It actually, if you delve into it and you bounce around on that app or go online, it gets fairly detailed talking exactly what is wrong with each piece of the infrastructure and, and exactly what needs to be improved. And locally, we took it to heart. And we put together these raising the grade initiatives. So we've taken the things that people are complaining about, the things that the report card found to be bad, and trying to explain exactly what needs to be improved around here to bring up that grade. And we're not so much concerned about the grade as we are about public safety and public yeah. well-being. The report cards are definitely a secondary aspect of this. So what we did is, with everything we do, there's always something that involves the grade schools with it. So <laughs> that's how we started on this. We were talking about the contest and, and who we're honoring. So coming in, we're going to have students coming in uh, from from Girls Inc. of Lynn and students coming. I went coming and visited them. They're last awesome. Week. Yeah, they were. They were awesome. And then there's students coming in all the way from Birchland Park, which is in East Long Meadow, Massachusetts. I don't even know where that is. That is south of Springfield, <laughs> almost down on the border. Oh my gosh. Of Connecticut. So the what they what they did is we put out a contest to them about one specific aspect of the infrastructure, and we talked about in New England. There's no way in New England that to get around on public transportation to almost everywhere. There's lots of little bus systems that go regionally. Yep, you know, the Boston area has one. Merrimack you get Valley. Up there, Merrimack Valley has one. Pioneer Valley has one. There's trains that go very few places. There's one crisscrossing track coming east-west, and then there's several tracks coming to the south and only one going north. Um, we're not really doing all that great when you <laughs> go in certain directions with the trains. Uh, but we wanted the kids to think outside the box and come up with whatever they could um, and present it in any form that they could come up with. And <laughs> the girls came up with a rap and uh, came with a rap all about a, a very high-powered turbo skateboard. Oh. To solve. I didn't say that this necessarily solves all problems, but it's an attempt, and it, it brings attention to it. And I thought what they did was a really great job, they, 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 a great effort. And the kids from Birchland Park came up with the idea of uh, a bus system that goes absolutely everywhere um, that would pick you up wherever you go instead of taking cars. But the thing to make it work would really be that everybody would have to stop taking cars. In order it's to almost like share pool. Like so cars. it's a share pool. It's a great idea. But hey, these are what we're talking about. They open. They might not have the solutions. And, and we like to say, hey, these are kids. But these are kids who are bringing out ideas that could be the ideas to take off in the future. And I mean, you know, that is how a lot of conversations for us start. You know, you just pick one specific area and you start throwing out ideas. It doesn't matter how stupid it is. We were just talking about structures earlier. 
and um, some of the amazing underground structures that are, well, I don't want to say that are coming out. They have come out because of the supposed zombie apocalypse that zombie should have occurred apocalypse. back in December. But I mean, some <laughs> of these underground structures are amazing. I'd, I'd live in one now. I mean, they have completely, they have geothermal, they have their like renewable generate energy. I mean, you never have to go outside. They have little tunnels to their neighbors. I mean, people really thought about this. And then they took like old freight containers and like turned them into like farms and like hydroponic farms with UV light. I mean, you can totally live underground, you know? You'll never have to run into a zombie, who knew? But the beautiful thing is that- Somebody somewhere These were great <laughs> ideas for maybe some other thing and they did this because of the upcoming zombie apocalypse. I love this. I know, but you know, it, <laughs> and it could get used just the, the farming method, just, yeah. you know, a hydroponic farm growing food in an area where water is scarce and where, you know, it's difficult, soil conditions are poor. So, I mean, those I think are a fantastic idea. They, they really, they really are. And it's funny because these are some of the ideas that we see from when we're dealing with the kids in the contest. They, they're always coming up with hydroponic farming. And they're, they're coming up with wave farms to get energy, and they're coming up with picking up energy from the sidewalks. Some of them are coming up with mandatory exercise into machines. The, you know, maybe not all the ideas are Mandatory exercise? Oh, no! <laughs> that sounds like <laughs> District 13 from The Hunger Games exactly. or something. I don't know what's going on with that. You hear the story and you're like, oh, no. No, don't go there. Don't go there. I know. Well, <laughs> you know, I think that would depend on your underground structure. But we're not going to... We're not gonna, maybe we should do a, a show on the zombie apocalypse right, we, living we, conditions <laughs> just for fun. But um, as far as ideas go, other than that, what, when you go on a job for the first time, like what are you working on right now at the moment? Well, right now I'm doing inspections of you know, tunnels and bridges like, like I always do. All right, so you find problems and you have to design repairs. Right. And at the moment, what I'm working on, and it's, it seems like it's going to be a, a big issue in the upcoming years, is uh, coastal issues and doing retaining walls, bulkhead walls, because especially because of Hurricane Sandy. I've been working a lot along the coast of Connecticut, the southern coast of Connecticut, but I'm also working up along. That's why I wanted to get um, our guest today that was an expert on beach erosion issues um, from the rising tide and water. And I mean, there's things we think about because a lot of these beaches and properties are owned by very small municipalities that just don't have the money. So we can kind of get a little bit more creative with our designs, which I like. But we always have to go back to what's tried and true, too. I mean, it has to be proven theory. So right. now, when do you ever, I know because I've done a little bit of what you do, there's always new product on the market. How do you decide how you're going to test it? Do you pick a small section and then follow it, monitor it? How, do you, how does that work? How do you well, actually, analyze? Actually, I mean, if you look at the way the Department of Transportation are everywhere, um, very wary of taking on new products for that very they, reason. Oh, I don't like that. Well, well, it, there's some logic in there because some of the times the products, you know, you need a long-term effect. So I, we, to you know, see how they really work. See how they really work. It, a lot of people like the pretty picture that comes from an initial drawing, but when, when I'm doing my work, the, the last thing I'm thinking about is that pretty picture. Like, even when I'm designing in the first place, I'm trying to picture the thing 30, 40 years from now. Yeah. I'm trying to picture it as the ugly, foot-covered structure that it will be. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> and, it's still at least hold you up. And that it will have. <laughs> and hopefully, you know, hopefully when you think of it that way, you've thought of things that it won't be a, a leaking, corroding soot-covered soot -covered structure. It'll just be soot-covered. If, I'm just talking about tunnels because that's the natural thing. You got trucks coming through them all day. Everything is dirty in a tunnel. But I heard uh, we did take a leap this year, Massachusetts, that some of the towns were using a new type of uh, pothole filler. Yeah, they've got a really high-tech method of sounding the ground and finding it. It's this machine that automatically fills the potholes. But it fills it with a new material that's supposed to be much better than the regular road fill they've been using, asphalt. Hey, I don't know details. I know. I, I will find out some details but, on that. Maybe we'll get someone in here because that's a big topic. We do. So and so and much the thing we've been seeing holes. coming up, we've been seeing a lot of, you know, I think some of the things that were new technology are becoming less new. Like, you, finally, you're seeing more carbon fiber being used everywhere. They're putting carbon fiber. So when I'm talking carbon fiber, I'm talking, you know, basically the same idea as like Kevlar, like a bulletproof vest material. Mm -hmm. It's a really high strength material. But it's super light. 
but it's super light and it's stringy and you got these strings in there and they're not gonna so it's not gonna crack and it's You've less got, expensive than steel right so there we go that's a seal fit for the but they can attach it to the underside of steel beams or concrete beams they can wrap things you can wrap columns in it and we're seeing it happening more and more in parking garages and other places it's becoming more and more regular um, I know some of the districts I've been seeing them put you know um, into casting into the concrete uh, cathodic, um, you know. Wait, meters? Not, not meters, but sacrificial uh, oh, cathodes really? in there. Wow. So the, what this is, it oh, stops. that was from one of the papers. There was that, right, <laughs> yeah. exactly. And um, it's actually happening around the state. They're actually putting it in there, and this will, this is, what it is, is it's a sacrifice. There's, whenever there's something where rust wants to happen, it'll find the weak point. So they're putting in the weak point that'll rust to stop rust from happening in other more important spots. That's very smart. It's very smart. And, and we're seeing it happening. Um, so technologies do come in. They just Takes a just, while. Well, I don't, and I don't blame them at all. Right. I mean, I everybody's got to write laws. There's insurance companies and lawyers in <laughs> our world, and we just got to deal with them. So. Yeah, no, no. Uh, be honest. I, I think that, that a lot of them have their, their, <laughs> their point, too. Yes. <laughs> they're not always just crazy. They're sometimes real real issues and you know but the deal is we don't want to have dangerous type uh, things ever being put out. But that is one more um, award that we're giving out tomorrow night is the Herzog Award. Oh and God, we didn't talk about like it was about the dam rehabilitation and I promise um, we will get those guests on here as well. So I have a lineup of guests that I'm trying to get on the show for you. Right we're giving out an award to engineers and these are different GZA uh, Geo Environmental and they wrote a paper about uh, the Otis, the Otis, da the Otis Reservoir Dam and bridge rehabilitation that was combined together, and it was a very, very cool project out in the western. It was. We'll state. definitely get them on here to talk about yeah. it. Unfortunately, and we didn't talk about the online bridge contest. Kids. I know we're running out of time. I know. Unfortunately, so um, we'll definitely try to get those guests on for you. And again, uh, feel free to call in if you think of anything you'd like to see focused on for a show. And that's no matter how small. I mean, potholes, um, rust, whatever you know, ask us. We might be able to get someone on here who is an expert and explain to you why or why not it can happen and change in your neighborhood. But thank you for watching, and we'll see you again next month. Thank you.